Welcome back to the series on investing in Queenstown. Today we're continuing the topic on overseas investments and also on restrictions uh, that go with that. We're going to talk a little bit also on the Overseas Investment Act 2005, which is the part of the law governing that um, property purchase. As a property consultant, I can certainly help you to buy a property you're going to love. However, the legal side needs to be covered by a legal specialist. That's why today I invited Graham Todd of Todd and Walker Law to join us today and explain how that all, all works. Graham is a long-term Queenstown local and runs a successful business practice here in Queenstown. Graham's mantra is to provide pragmatic, cost-effective and prompt legal advice to his clients, something that we all really like. Graham, could you give us an overview of the restrictions facing overseas investors? Yes, good morning, Beata, and I'm not too sure about the long-standing uh, a local person <laughs> showing my age a wee bit. I'm sorry about that, but you for a long time too. Yeah, uh, one of the things I get the pleasure of dealing with on a regular basis is dealing with a lot of overseas uh, clients who are keen to purchase property in New Zealand and uh, we're very fortunate about that. Generally buying property in New Zealand is very straightforward and there are very few restrictions uh, for overseas people in doing so, but there are a couple of key issues. One is that uh, you can't buy in excess of five hectares of land uh, without first obtaining the consent of the Overseas Investment Commission through the Overseas Investment Act 2005. Secondly, there may be certain residential blocks of land uh, that, because of their location, may also trigger the requirement to obtain Overseas Investment Commission consent. And those are generally where the land is adjacent to a river or in our case the lake uh, or a reserve and in those situations the um, threshold, the area threshold is substantially reduced uh, down to 4,000 square metres or one acre or in some cases less than that down to 2,000 square metres. One of the things you need to watch out for is it may not be immediately obvious that your property breaches those thresholds because the title itself may only be for a certain area of land, but they may also have a share in an access allotment or an adjacent piece of land. And if that share, albeit that it's an undivided share, could the total area of that uh, land is taken into consideration. So that again and, comes down to reading the title of the property absolutely. correctly and getting legal advice. Yeah, and getting advice from somebody who's familiar with dealing with these issues because it is a specialist area. I've been fortunate enough to practice in that area uh, for a long time now, um, but uh, it is something that you have to be very, very wary about. And the process is not straightforward in obtaining an overseas uh, investment office approval. It's a, a process that can take up to six months minimum uh, and one that is likely to cost you in excess of $50,000. So you don't go into it lightly uh, and you need advice as to whether or not you are going to qualify for overseas investment office approval. But as I said, those are generally the exceptions to property. Most properties uh, in Queensland, most residential properties, you won't have any concerns in that regard whatsoever. And it's a straightforward process of buying and selling land, no restrictions on it, no restrictions on monies coming into New Zealand or going out of New Zealand, provided that you uh, hold the land for two years from the date of purchase until you've sold it. Uh, then there won't be any withholding tax payable or, or, or any other taxes. Uh, and the other big benefit of buying and selling land in New Zealand is we don't have stamp duty. So that's a, a major plus. Yes, or capital gains tax indeed. <laughs> that's great. Thank you very much, Graham. Thanks.